Welcome to Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. A place to connect, to grow, and to cultivate your faith in Christ. Together, we'll learn how to stand in victory each and every day. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about what God has given us through the death of His Son, and that it is all available for us, but we have to receive it. We have to receive it because, first of all, the problem in the body of Christ is um, a lot of us don't know what was accomplished at the cross. A lot of us don't know what we've been given. A lot of us don't know who we became in Christ once we received him. So, you know, lack of knowledge creates a big problem in our lives. So it's important. And that's why we're here. So we can share with you what exactly has been given to us uh, once we receive Christ, and then we can use it and live in victory yeah. every single day. We can what, do this. We're really here to give you understanding. Yeah. First, you have to have the knowledge of what happened. You need you need to know something about what's in the Bible. But you may not understand it, and you're just not going to do anything right. with it. You need right. to understand it. And we're here today to give you understanding so you can operate in it when you... Ha- when you first start with knowledge and then you got to get the understanding and then you can move it into wisdom and wisdom is when you'll really, really prosper and grow in, in God. Yeah. Yeah, So uh, we've entitled this receive what he gave, because like I said, if somebody hands me a present, I take it, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the, that's what we have to think when we're thinking about what Jesus provided for us. You need to receive that with gratefulness. So we're going to start by talking about worship and this is going to lead into what, um, what we really want to talk about. And, you know, sometimes I just go to the dictionary and I just look up the regular definition of the word worship. And it means to show profound religious devotion and respect to to express feelings of adoration, to attend service for worship. So, you know, when we think of worship, we think of, uh, you know, singing, we think of praising, we think of dancing, we think of going to church, we think of kneeling before him, dancing before him, lifting up our hands before him, and that is all true. But, it, you know, and and there are there are few scriptures, we're not going to go over them in depth, but like in Matthew chapter 15, the woman came and it says the woman came, she came and worshiped him and said, so, and whatever that was, but she knelt down and worshiped him before anything else. She showed her adoration for who she was about to speak to. The same in Matthew chapter 18, the servant fell down and worshiped him. And that seems to be the way we need to start things, you know, Al, just to worship God for who he is. Right. And And what he's done. Absolutely. And we don't really, it's so important to understand worship. A lot of that is honor to God and respect to God. And sometimes it's hard to honor God because the culture around you is trying to make fun of you for honoring God. You Sometimes you'll not do something that everybody else is doing and get persecution mm-hmm. for it. But if you're going to honor God, I don't, I don't care. You can persecute me all day long. I don't care. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And in other words, who's more important, God or the, your, the, the public right. opinion of you? Right. And I don't care what people think of me at all. I want them to like me. Don't misunderstand. Yeah, I mean, it's me. But nice. if they're not going to, it's too bad. I'm going to worry about what God thinks You're not of going me. to let them control your life oh. by reacting to them not liking you or persecuting you. You're yeah. just going to go on. That's why it's so important to know the plan and the focus that, you know, that the, the God wants you to focus on his plan and purpose. And when you have that, even as a mother, when you, when you have a child, I, you know, so many moms for the first time, time they have a baby and right away their purpose kicks in and they're completely yeah. different people. And everyone needs a plan and a purpose. And guess what? God's got one for you. So, you know, that's what we have to focus on. But there are many other forms of worship that we don't think to put 
into the category of worship. Right. You know, like worship goes across the board. Like we were in church on Sunday and uh, the pastor's wife got up and she says, now we're going to um, worship God through our giving. You know, we're going to get into that in a minute, but that is a form of worship. So it's a form of recognizing and adoring someone. So John 4.23, Jesus says this to the Samaritan woman at the well. Yet the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers, okay, will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. So the spirit it's talking about here, Al, is our born-again spirit, mm -hmm. right? It has to come from here. It has to come from our new nature, you know, and our worship comes through that or it's not the worship God's looking for. Did you know your giving can create prosperity for you? Absolutely. When, you know, when you give into God's kingdom and you're pouring finances into this ministry right here, we will take that money and pay our bills and we can prosper and we can get the word of God out to more people throughout the whole world. We really are worldwide now. And you can be a part of this and you'll get part of the reward that we get and God will bless you financially. That's right, it's important to put your seed into good ground and this Victory Life Ministries right. is certainly good ground. So we do encourage you to give to Victory Life Ministries. You could go to our website, victorylifeministries.org. We appreciate anything and everything that you could do. Just press that donate button and become a recurring partner or just a one-time giver. It doesn't matter, we appreciate anything. And you know, when you partner with us, you will be getting the same rewards as us. And that is true. That's right. So today, go to victorylifeministries.org. Right. Okay. And the truth is is truth pertaining to God and the duties of man, moral, and, and respecting God of the execution of his purposes through Christ. So the point is this. These explanations expand way further than just singing and praising and bowing oh, before absolutely. the Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's so important to understand that, you know, your worship could be just going to work in the morning. Exactly, um, because that's what God's called you to do. Right. He's put you in that place, and even if you don't think he did, he wants you to honor the position you're in, you know, and if he wants you out of it, he'll get you out of it. All these things are minor compared to the fact that you're doing what the Bible says, especially in Proverbs, go work with your hands. Yeah, that's right. Go work. When don't you, be lazy. It's important to have that purpose and that plan for your life. It is important for men and women. Women, it's more like raising children. With men, it's more like their job is their purpose, um, but it, it's all it all interconnects. <clears throat> but you know, I was just reading that when you said that. He said, "When the true worshipers will worship," and I thought about that, and I said, "That means there are untrue worshipers, because the opposite is always yes, true in the is. Bible. If there's true worshipers, then there's worshipers that are not true. They're not really God. Now that could be." people in a cult. It could be all kind of different things. doesn't say what that means. But for right. sure, what you want to do is make sure you're a true worshiper. And the way you do that is just ask God, say, Lord, you got to show me, make sure I'm, I'm where I need to be. Right. If I'm deceived, if I'm going the wrong direction, show me and I'll change it. Right. I want to be a true worshiper. That's an important factor in this whole thing. <clears throat> you always got to remember, I'm going to get into it later, whenever there's a true worshiper, there's an untrue worshiper. Everything that God does, Satan counterfeits. And you can get caught up in the counterfeit and not even know it. So go ahead. And I'm you sorry. know, the motive for worshiping is extremely important because when Paul and Silas were in prison, they began to worship. They didn't worship so they could get out of prison. They were just worshiping God because they loved him and that was their daily routine. I mean, I do not start my day without 30 minutes of worship and praying in tongues with my cup of coffee. <laughs> I got to have that cup of coffee, sit there. And that's how I start my day every day. And God honors that. And you know, my days go smoothly. It doesn't mean I don't have problems, but boy, he's taking care of them. So one of the ways we could worship him, and what we're trying to say is by walking in his truths daily, you are automatically bringing worship to your king. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's what I wanted to say about that. So. Right. And, you know, one of the instructions that God has given us in the word is to give. 
Now, giving, yes, I'll let, I'll let you continue. Giving is a form of worship. Like I said on Sunday, she Absolutely. said we're going to worship God through our giving. Absolutely, 100% correct. After, by the way, we spent 50 minutes worshiping in song. Mm. You see? So the whole time you're at church, you're worshiping God. The whole thing is a worship service, yes, really. just the fact that you're there. It's awesome. You know, I, I look at worship, the whole idea of worship, I look at that more like um, <clears throat> this is what I'm about. This is what's important yes. to me. You know, I've seen people uh, that were like people that were involved with horses, not Christian people, but Christians can have horses. But anyway, <laughs> and and they were they were worshiping these horses they had. Yes. They had these big dollar, very expensive horses. And they basically, that was what their life was all about. These fancy, expensive horses and the horse racing and everything they did. That was where worship. Right. And I want you to understand, it's not just hooting and howling for Jesus on a Sunday morning. It's about your whole life is worship. What about sports? People worship sports. They worship, and they worship some of the players. And, yes. you know, it's like, listen, you're worshiping this guy. He's been in and out of jail, maybe. Yeah. He's been in all kind of trouble. And, yeah, he's really good at playing whatever sport you like, and I'll give you that. But he's not someone you want to worship. So, and the Hollywood people. Yes. They're worshiping exactly. them like crazy. And those people usually, as Andrew would say, they're the bottom of the barrel most of the time. And be, so I want you to get this concept of worship. You know, when I was a kid, I had a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know God from Bar of Soap back then. <laughs> but I would go out in that garage and just sit there and look at it. Yeah. It was like a worship service. It was just like, wow, this is so cool. This is look at look what I have. And I sold it. We were laughing. I sold it for four grand. It's probably worth four million dollars today. You know, you know that's really true because what we do is we create soul ties because we're worshiping something. And I remember we, we built a home in North Carolina on Lake Norman. It was a beautiful, big home, gorgeous. We just finished it, and you we just finished it. We just moved in, and you said to me, "Well, maybe in a year we'll sell it." You just had because you're that. We are always thinking of how to. Make something, make money, make money yeah. blah, 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 because you're a money man. That's okay. That's good. But do you know when you said that, I was not distraught. I was not upset. I loved the home. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Every <clears throat> minute of it, I still think about it. I enjoy it. But I didn't have any soul ties to that no. house. Look, just like I don't have any soul ties to this home, which makes you avail more available to God to move you where he wants to move you. You know, but a lot of times you go, oh, I can't leave this area. All my kids are here. There goes your, and we left our kids to go to North Carolina to serve the Lord because that's where he called us. So you got to have that mentality and not, you know, where are, where is your worship? Is it in the home? Is it in the area? Is it in your kids? Or is it in what God has for you? Yeah, you need to examine yourself and say, yeah. what do I really worship or how, you know, I remember many, many years ago, a long time ago, I was worshiping God, and the Lord asked me a question in the midst of that, and he said, am I first in your life? Mm. And I, I really, if I was honest with myself and honest with God, I said, no, you're not. You're like third. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> But I was honest about yes. it, and I understood what he was saying. Am I first? And I said, you're not first. There's other things that are first. And the Lord said this to me, well, then it's all unacceptable. Now, it's a beginning, but it's what he's saying is, I got to be first in your life. So I began to change the way I did. I started changing my thinking, and I said, I see what I have to do. I, I got to get him up there where he's first right. and get these other things below. Right. And I did. Yes, you and did. did. And you, you are now on the narrow path rather than the broad right. path. Right. He's yeah. first in my life and it doesn't right. everything after that. Yeah, I want good things. I want a good life. I want things to work. Of course, I want people right. to like me. But if they don't and it doesn't go that well, I don't mean a thing. Exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? Okay, so talk to us about So giving. one of the reasons, one of the many reasons giving to me is one of the most important reason in worship. To me, giving is the most, most important, important form of worship. I'm sorry, form oh, of worship. Cool. Um because God loves it when we give. He loves a cheerful, God loves a cheerful giver. And um, look at look at John 3.16 now. For God so loved the world that he gave. I mean, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
So God, well, giving is God's way of doing business. He's just always giving. And is linked to love. Giving is linked to love and worship. Yeah, everything God does or asks us to do, it always falls under his banner of love. He's When God's trying to lead you to do something or go somewhere or live in a person, it's for your benefit. It's about Jesus, but it's for you. It's for your good and for your benefit. Wow. And he's a giver, and he wants us to be like him. Uh, God only operates in the realm of love, you know, and love is the motivation for everything. That's very true. Like, like we we give to God because we love him, okay? But you don't want to forget the second part, that there is a harvest on the other end of this for you, and that you you give because you love. You don't give. You know, we, we preach here that you give and it will be given unto you because that's scripture, Luke 6, 38. And so the more you give, the more you'll get back a hundredfold return in this life. But that's not my motivation for giving. That's not Al's motivation. First of all, it's obedience to God that we give. And second of all, it's because we want to give. We love him and we want to increase his kingdom. And as a result of that, he pours it back onto us a hundredfold. So your motivation in giving has to be correct. Yeah, if you're giving, uh, <laughs> you can always tell where somebody, what's first place in their life when you reach into their wallet. And <clears throat> if if God, if, if money is first place in your life, you'll get turned off by a giving message. Oh, absolutely. You'll get yes. turned off right away. And I've seen people when they start talking about your giving and they are, everything else is fine. You know, oh, we're, we're loving mm -hmm. and we're going to pray and we're going to do all these things. But the minute you talk about giving, you can see them shut down. Mm -hmm. Then that memory I talked about, Lord, you're third in my life. Th then money's first. Right. Maybe the Lord is second. Right. But when the Lord's first, money's not a big issue anymore. It's a commodity. Absolutely. It's just something you use to prosper the kingdom of God, and he blesses you for it. Praise the Lord. So when we give, we're operating the God kind of love, because God's a giver, and he right. wants us to be like him. And part of worshiping is showing God, you, you're the one I worship because I'm giving. That's right. You come first. It's a outward form of an inward reality. It's literally showing this is where, and money is important. Right. Talk about worship. People worship money. You know, you can you can go down to the church and give it an hour and a half of hooting and howling, and it didn't cost you much. Right, right. But when it starts costing That's you money. Right. That's right. And, you know, I know people that know me that would agree with me that giving works. They would see it, and they don't give. Because yeah. money is still more important to them. Right. And they and, and actually not giving is a lack of trust in God's word that says, I will give it back to you. They really don't believe it. Really and don't. you know what, Al? If they see it in your life, they're going to say, well, you're a man of God. He'll do it for you. But I've done this. I've done that. It's always back to that condemning of self. And I don't deserve this. That messes people up big yep. time. Big well, time. you know, I would say this. Look, I know you don't deserve it. Right. Right. You know, when Satan shows up and says, you don't deserve it, I already know I don't deserve it. Right. God does it anyway because he loves me and he wants to give this to me. And that's the grace of God. You know, Amen. you know, one of the things about giving, huh, I gave one of my prosperity books to somebody I know, and I looked at him and I said this. I said, when you read this book, Satan's going to say to you, it worked for him, but it won't work for you. Wow, that's just what we were just saying. And you know what yep. I mean? Because this is Satan has got to now discredit this whole thing. And he's going to say, no, 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 no. That He's lucky. Look what he has. He's lucky. The word luck doesn't exist. It's, it's a word Satan invented so he could say to someone, they have something you don't have and it's too bad. There's no such thing as luck. There's only blessing and cursing. That's good. And if you want to live in the blessing, you just go, uh, say, I've seen people. I remember that in these different families, they would say things like, Christian, lots of luck. Oh, yeah, always, always. What do you mean lots of luck? In other words, that it, the only way you're going to prosper is with luck. Right. You got to get lucky and right. play the lottery. Right. That's not God's right. form. That's not his way of worship. Worship is I'm putting my money down on the line. I believe in God. This is this is. Amen. You, you know, I talk about God's speed when you when you give someone when, when you say to someone God's speed. What you're saying is I'm going to vote for you. 
Mm. I'm going to agree with you, and here's some you. money for your campaign. That's the way it is with God in worship. Lord, wow. I'm in. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to believe the Bible. Here's my money. Amen. I'm in agreement. That's right. Good. Your money proves you're in agreement. It proves you're in agreement. That's right. Because so it's an action. You know, his love for us, Al, is a motivation for us to give. And that's what we talked about before. And, be you know, how much did he love us? He loved mankind so much that he gave Jesus to take the punishment we deserve. I mean, we, we should know all of this. So we are, when we are giving, we are expressing God's heart. Okay? And it brings him great pleasure. Because... Because he is the biggest giver ever. There's no greater gift than salvation, than the key to get into heaven. And that's believing in Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave. You know, I remember when I got, I got saved when I was 29, and I realized I got saved, radically saved. And uh, I realized at that point, I was going to hell 100 miles an hour. Once you got saved, you realized what was happening? Yeah, because before that, who knew or cared? You just yeah, live. You just do your thing, whatever amazing. makes you happy. Who cares about anything? Whatever I can get, steal, take, make right. sure I don't get caught. And um, once I got saved, the reality of the old life that I thought was reality was a lie. Yeah. And yeah. the new life is real reality. I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. There really is a heaven. Yes. And there really is a hell. Yeah. You know, if I could just stop and pray for a minute, because people need a revelation on this. This is what the Holy Spirit is just talking to me about right now, that pray for revelation. So there are some out there that need a deeper revelation, their eyes open as to what we're talking about as far as money and finances and worship. So let's pray together. Sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person out there who is watching this, hearing this. Uh, that they would realize, and it is only by your spirit, the truth of this message, and that it is not only meant for Al and Angie Burke, it is meant for them too. And they have just as much of the kingdom of God available to them as we do to us, because Father, you are no respecter of persons. So I am asking you and thanking you that you are shining a light in the hearts and minds of these people right now, so that their mind will align with the Holy Spirit of God that is residing within them right now and they will come into agreement with you with their new nature the nature of God residing in them they will become in agreement with it which is becoming in agreement with your word and that once that light goes on things will be different and the Lord is telling each and every one of you to test him and not to prove him wrong, but to prove his word right. That you would take that offering and you would give it on purpose with the intention of seeing God work in your life. This is by faith. So plant a seed today, God says. Anywhere you want, make sure it's good ground. Make sure the Holy Spirit's telling you where to put it. And expect to see a harvest coming. Expect to see your needs met. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I Amen. like that proving God because it talks about in the scripture, it's proved me now here with. It does. It and does. that's the only place in the Bible where he says, prove me now. And that's in the book of Malachi. And it says, prove me that, you know, just test me and prove me that I won't pour out a an abundance of blessings on you. In other words, he's waiting there. I remember Al, I did a children's sermon years ago and I came out, all the kids were sitting down and I had a big giant bucket and it was filled with all little toys and candies and everything. And I was telling them that God's got this bucket of blessings and it's once I pour it out, are you going to grab it? You know, and I, and I showed them that he's so willing and ready to show himself strong in your life, but you've got to want it and you've got to put him first in your life for him to give what is he's waiting to give you. Mm hmm. It's just so awesome. He needs that or wants so, it. So, you know, really what we're talking about is receiving what God has for you. And if you put him first in your life through worship and through giving, then he will show forth and the and and heaven will pour down on you. You know, I remember a family member of mine, we passed a church one time and uh, 
And this person looked at the cross outside of the church and she got very sad. And she says, oh, she says, I'm so sad about what happened. And that was a terrible thing that happened to Jesus. And that sounded really commendable and right and true. But she missed the second part. She missed the resurrection part. She missed what God Almighty has given us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. She missed the 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 prosperity we could have, the healing we could have, and, and all those gifts poured on us, the peace and love and joy and everything that God, the deliverance from the enemy, financial prosperity. She missed the good part of the message. And this is what we want to tell you. There is so much more than Jesus just dying for your sin sin to forgive you so that you can go into heaven. Listen, that was something that had to be done in order to live in the kingdom of God, in order to live the abundant life that Jesus died to give us. If the forgiveness issue, it, I remember a pastor once said to us, Al, it's almost like God had to get the forgiveness issue out of the way that he forgave us. So now here is the kingdom. Here is your abundant life that you could live. You can be delivered from what the enemy brings against you. You've got authority over sickness, authority over poverty. And if you follow the principles in my word, you can be living this abundant life that Jesus has. So this is what the message is today. Put God first, worship him in spirit and in truth, and the truth is one of the things is to give, okay? And you could give into this ministry, you could give into any ministry you want. We're not telling you you have to give here. It would be wonderful if you did. And you can go to victorylifeministries.org and click that donate button and become a partner or just give a one-time gift. That does not go unnoticed. We pray for you every single day, Al and I, and we bless you in this life a hundredfold and any other need you might have in your life. So victorylifeministries.org. Well, we hope you got something out of this message today. I know I certainly did. Thanks so much for joining us. And remember, victory is always yours through Jesus Christ. We'll see you next time. Victory Life Ministries was founded to help you connect, grow, and flourish in a relationship with Jesus. Al and Angie Burke are committed to teaching the body of Christ how to walk in strength, in boldness, in love. Connect with us online today at victorylifeministries.org. You'll find the encouragement, inspiration, and resources you need to stand in victory each and every day. Join in on a growing community of believers that are partnering to bring these messages all over the world. With your help, we can make a change. We can shift the atmosphere. Live your best life. Live an effective life full of faith, hope, and vision. Live life above your circumstance.